you come on Thursdays, game one. Because we all get to decide. The business, the way to shoot the video. Thank you, buddy. I'm just going to leave that quote on. Oh, please do. I like that. <laughs> well, if you think this is rude, you might want to leave now because I got a lot of shit coming your way today. All right, just to get a quick sense of the room, who follows me on social so I can kind of reverse engineer this conversation? Put your hands up high. I appreciate it. Everyone else, get out. <laughs> is it fair? Because we're in a very intimate room today that I share some numbers with you and it doesn't sound like I'm bragging or as the kids say, I'm flexing. Is that okay if I share some numbers with you today? I wanna to get your permission. Yeah, okay, cool, awesome. So, myself and my business partner with REC Canada, we have approximately 50 agents on our team for the last decade, year over year. We've done anywhere from about 650 transactions to 700 transactions a year. But I'm not going to talk to you about what my team does. Out of those 650 to 700 transactions a year, myself, my VP, Laura Stewart, my right-hand guy, Tyler Walburn, and another gentleman by the name of Luke Leasing, we help about 150 to 200 people a year. I tell you these numbers, not to impress you. I actually don't really care what you think of me, <laughs> truly. And to help you with today's conversation about putting on events, you should start getting over the fact that most people are not thinking about you as much as you think that they're thinking about you. You're really not that important, including myself. And I know you thought you were gonna to come to an inspirational, motivational talk today, but we have to get to a place where we do not care about the opinions of others, or you will be in prison of not being able to take action on the stuff that I'm gonna be talking to you about today. Because you're always gonna be worried about what your cousin, aunt, high school friend is thinking about you. Is that fair? Yeah. Okay. Now, out of those 150 to 200 transactions in the last seven years, I haven't left the office. I don't even own a computer. I don't even have an office, actually. I have a chair in the back wing of Shops of Don Mills location. Again, I tell you that not to impress you, more to let you know that you can create a business around your life. It doesn't need to be the other way around. You can create the business around your life. How do you do that? Well, first and foremost, you got to start with what the heck are your hours of operation? What does your schedule look like? Because it would be weird, right, if we went to Starbucks and we never know when they're open or not. Because the biggest thing that I've heard in 20 years that I've been doing this business from other realtors, and for the last three years actually coaching realtors, is I don't have enough time. And we all know that's bullshit. I got two videographers around here. I got two back in the office full time. If I sent them to your place of doing business, home or the office, for the last week, last seven days, and they recorded every hour of your week, would you pay yourself the amount that you want to get paid? And let that sit with you for a minute. If you want to make a half a million, a million, two million GCI, 300, whatever the number is, it doesn't matter. If my guys and gals recorded what you were doing for the last week, would you pay yourself that amount? I'm gonna venture and say that most of you wouldn't. Why? Because you actually didn't put in the work 
and it always comes down to the fact that you don't have a schedule set up. Because the stuff I speak to you about today, guys, it's not gonna work unless you fucking work. Uh-oh, who got worried about the F-bomb? <laughs> Nobody, we're good, nobody's left. Okay, good. Here's what I recommend. 20 years in the business, I've been doing it at a very high level. I'm gonna pour into you guys today as much as I possibly can with the time I have. I think I have about 30 minutes, and then I wanna go right into Q&A and take the questions anywhere. What was exactly you make, Jazz? How did you scale? What content, events, wherever you wanna go, because I want you to be selfish. And I know that screws with a lot of us because we were taught not to be selfish. It's not kind. But for today's conversation, I want you to be very, very selfish and ask yourself the, ask the questions in Q&A that's burning in your mind. This is the lab. Make this the lab. So we don't have to make the mistakes out in the outside market. Ask all the questions here when we go into Q&A, because me doing these talks for the last five years, you're going to get the most value from your questions that you have burning inside your head. Now, what's the number one thing that you need to do? Is prospect, lead gen. We gotta schedule it. I'm telling you what to do. From nine to 12, every day that you decide to work. That's why setting up your schedule is important. I'm not here selling you hustle porn, meaning work 26 hours a day, eight days a week. I don't believe in that nonsense. You won't have the longevity. It won't be sustainable. But here's one thing that you should do. Nine to 12, the days that you're gonna work, no outside appointments. Client wants to see a home, no problem, Mr. and Mrs. Client. I'd love to show you that home. What time works better for you? 1 p.m. or 3 p.m.? 6 p.m. or 8 p.m.? My biggest pet peeve, the fucking home inspector says, you have to get this inspected at 11 a.m. Since when does the home inspector decide when we should see this property and when he or she can inspect it? You tell the home inspector, can't do it between 9 and 12? What works better, 1.30 or 3.30? Why? Because if you leave for that appointment, you will fall out of business very soon because this business is all about meeting people. That's it. Guys, I barely passed high school. Half the words I'm gonna say to you today, I don't even know how to spell them. Yeah. For real, test me. The one thing I figured out in 30 years of sales and service is as long as I meet people, a decade ago, it was all belly to belly. In the last seven, eight years, got lucky, this internet thing came, social media got built on that, allowed me to meet more people. One job, from nine to 12, meet as many people as you possibly can in person and online. Your second job is help them buy, sell, and invest. This group here, because I kind of have an idea of where your numbers are in terms of GCI, some of you might be ready to scale out, but the mindset and the goal and the objective needs to be that everything in between you meeting people in person and online and helping them buy, sell, and invest has to be delegated. Are you the best MLS printer in the world? Like you're the only one who can upload a listing? Guys, I don't even know how to get on MLS. I was talking to my team a couple of days ago. I thought we still had a blue little authenticator thing. For real. Why? Because that's not my job. Because when you have more people in your funnel, another word for that is database, CRM, you have the ability and the probability of helping more people. Everything in between can be handled by someone else. Now, what are the best ways to actually generate 
more business to meet people. Here's been my thesis and what I've been executing on. I want you to steal everything. There's only gonna be two of you who actually do anything in this room anyways. I just don't know which two. <laughs> Hence why I gotta come to the whole room and speak to all of you. You're not stealing anything from me. There's enough to go around. There's enough business out there. If we run out of pies, we'll bake more. We'll figure it out. But here's the three ways that I've been generating business for the last decade. My CRM is the most fundamental lead generation tool I use. Now you all have KV Core, and the one thing I love about coming to do this talk for Signature, I truly believe you guys are like the, my brothers and sisters, because I've been with the Slidem since there was 350 agents. I just got told we're up to 1,600. When I go and do talks for other brokerages, I don't know the ins and outs as much. I know this operation very well. And so, I know you have a free CRM. Who opens it up every day? Put up your hands. Keep your hands up, just keep your hands up. Okay, everyone else, look around. I just told you, out of the 150 to 200 transactions, that is GCI to me anywhere from $3 million to $4 million a year. A kid from the north part of Rec uh, Toronto called Rexdale. Some of you know that area. It's the area that they tell you to roll up your windows and lock your doors. I was told my whole life that I'm not going to be anything. It does anywhere from $3 million to $3.5 million, 100% from my CRM. Not 99, not 98, 100%. So if you don't start putting people's names and numbers into your CRM and using that tool, you will not be sitting here next year, I guarantee you. Because the order taking of this business is over for until at least another couple of years. How many people get the come list me phone calls still? Or I'm ready to buy and sell. Or the guys and gals that are doing the Google AdWords. Is it costing a little bit more money? Is there less leads coming in? Yet, all the money that you're looking for is right in this device if this was your CRM, it's mine. I know that's not the most sexiest tool or the most sexiest conversation slash topic, but that's the most fundamental. We're all real estate agents. I know there's some mortgage brokers that usually sneak in. We understand, you can't build a home on a swampy foundation Yet you're trying to build a business where each person in your phone has the ability to make you 25 fucking grand and yet we pay them no attention because we want to reach out to a cold Facebook lead? Mickey Mouse at Hotmail.com 967-1111 phone number? but I figured out why. Because see, when that Facebook lead call inquires and you call them and they reject you, it doesn't feel that bad. Because they don't really know you. But goddamn, when you call your cousin and your cousin says, I'm not wanting to use you, or you have to reach out to your cousin or aunt who changed your diapers, it's a little weird. I will give you a script right now, and I highly recommend you guys take a lot of notes. I don't use slides, I can't read and speak at the same time. So take some notes. You open up your phone, and you start with the letter A. And you call this person that you haven't spoken to, and here's your line. Chris? 
How you doing? It's Shaz. I know it's been a minute. Listen, I didn't want to take up too much of your time, but I was just hoping to get your opinion on some of the content that I'm going to be doing through emails, social media, and events. Are you okay with that? You are? Awesome. It's Chris at Chris.com. 416-443-0300. Fantastic. I'll be in touch. Now don't go all salesy on me and start saying, Chris, do you want to buy and sell and invest the house, bro? Because that's what the salesperson does. That's what they're expecting you to do. If you want to start to reconnect with people, I've been using that same line for 20 years and 99% effective rate of the person's like, sure, dude, send me whatever you want to send me. I'm okay with it. But now, you have to send some emails. Mm. Okay. Well, here's a recommendation. Every other week, let's send them an email. You got their permission. It's called permission-based marketing, by the way. It's not spammy stuff. One little tidbit. Anytime you call someone, by the way, you notice how I said, Chris? Not high as this Chris, because you sound like a fucking air duct cleaner. Okay? And they're my paisans. I know where they're calling from, so I can, I can make fun of them a little bit. Okay? Never call anybody and say, hey, is this Chris? Because that's not how we speak to each other as friends. I want to get his attention as quickly as possible. I got about four seconds to build some rapport on a phone call. Get to it quickly. Don't waste his time. Got to send some emails now, though, every other week. So what do we do? Has anybody been using and flirting with AI? Put up your hands. OK. AI is not going to take over our jobs. Don't worry about it. But it will take over the people that don't make use of it. Let me say that again. It won't take over our jobs. The reason is because is this is such an emotional transaction. Guys, I've knocked on doors since I've been six years old. I don't even believe in Christmas that much, but we used to sell Christmas fucking ornaments. And I sold newspapers. And then I sold shoes. And I sold car, uh, sorry, mortgages and loans at the Red Bank. Then I sold cars and now real estate for 20 years. I tell you that because I don't, I've never done anything else. This is my hobby. I don't ski, I don't golf. I don't cottage. Not that there's anything wrong with it. I, the, it's people's hobbies. You should have hobbies. I'm pretty boring. So when it comes to sales, I've worked up the ladder. And all those places that I mentioned, it wasn't like six weeks. Three years at a time. Building, building, building. The only reason I got into real estate because it was the one rung on the ladder of sales that I didn't conquer yet. And it was a big ticket. So the stuff I'm telling you, these are not pontifications. That's, a, that's the word I can't spell. These are actual results-based conversations I'm having with you. Going back to AI, highly recommend that you start getting comfortable with it. Because if you don't, people like me and the 1%, top 1%, and the reason that there's a top 1% because they do what 99% of people don't do. That's it. It's the only reason that there's a top 1%. It's because they do what the other 99 don't do or don't know how to do. We're making use of it because it's, an, it's a fantastic tool to help us move quicker. You go into ChatGPT and you say, I am a local realtor. This is what you type. And within months, you're going to be able to say it with your voice. It's coming very soon. But for now, you're going to write, I am a local realtor in Toronto. I want to provide my clients that consists of buyers, sellers, and investors with a bi-weekly email 
that is driven by value and education and not salesy. Please provide me with a hundred. In 16.1 seconds, it gives you a hundred topics. Why did I say a hundred? I know you're only going to send 26 in a year because now you can pick and choose. And then you say, topic 1, 14, 18, 32, get to 26. Please write the full email for me with the subject line. And in 30 seconds, it writes you 26 full emails that you copy, paste, put into your KV core, schedule, pick any day. Don't overthink this. Pick it on Thursday at 10 a.m. That's when I do it. Why? We just pick the day. And the emails get sent. Content from a social media perspective. Social media is not a fad anymore. Who's on any type of social media? Who goes on social media? Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. Just put up your hands for a second. Okay. Again, keep them up high. All right. Now, keep your hands up if you produce a piece of content daily on one of those platforms. So you go on it every day. Okay. You go on it every day. Everyone in this room goes on it every day, but yet you won't produce content for it. You know what that's like, guys? That's like knowing that there's a party down the street where buyers and sellers are saying, I want to buy houses and um, I need real estate agents and you don't go to that party. How weird would that be? You might not want to leave yet. I'm, we're doing a car giveaway, my friend. Once a day, one video. See why the 9 to 12 schedule is so important, that time slot? Because that's when you do these things. So you'll never leave at the end of the day saying, I didn't have enough time. I didn't get to it. And then the third lead generation funnel that I've been using for the last 20 years is putting on educational events. We started off 20 years ago with first time home buying and how to sell your home. Side note. You guys want a little trick? Teach people how to buy their own home and sell their own home without you. Something I've been doing for 20 years. I teach people how to sell their own home. I tell them that they don't need a real estate agent. And I know that sounds weird with a room full of agents. But here's why. If you look at land registry, match it with TREB, 98% of the time, the transactions that happen, or with the help of a real estate agent. In our country, 100 years. So you know that they're using a real estate agent most, like 98% of the time. So what we did, as we're always trying to look to ways to disrupt the industry or bring more value to our clients, we started teaching them how to buy, sell, and in the last decade, invest on their own. Some of my older agents, the more veteran ones, as I like to call them, sorry. There used to be a saying in sales, do not give away the farm, because otherwise they're not going to come to you. We're in a completely different time now. Give it all away. Why? Because there's these sites, two of them that are huge, that I'm not sure if you guys go on. Write this one down. G O O G. L E. You can Google and YouTube all the information. You don't hold anything close to your chest anymore. You don't have anything that's, that people can't find online. So why not be the, become the authority and start giving it away? Now in the last decade, what we moved to is helping people create wealth. Here's 
Here's what that did for us. See, we started to notice that our clientele, and you can probably say nationally, a decade ago, only 5% of the market turned over, meaning that on a regular basis, a person would buy or sell once every five years. I think it's probably safe to say now it's closer to one to every seven years. Does everybody agree with me? You can disagree, it's okay, you're not hurting my feelings. So instead of only talking about their first property or selling, downsizing, upsizing, we call it smart sizing, we started to target investors. People who wanted to create wealth in their life and get out of the rat race of the nine to five. Well, think about why you're here, right? Maybe for the free food. You. But it's probably to learn one nugget from me, some Chris said, something Sam said, so you can get out of this rat race, you can make some more money. There's nothing wrong with that. But we also know that that's what 99% of people out there want to do as well. They want to try to get out of this rat race. And so if you have a product like we do, real estate, that can help them do that, we thought it would be a good idea to speak about it on a regular basis. So we started to shift our events in and around helping people create wealth. And what we started to notice is that for a lot of our clientele, it became a drug. Because when they did it once, not that I've ever done heroin, but I've heard that they want to do the hit again and again. People wanted to invest over and over again. We started seeing people that wanted to transact five to seven times in the same year. So we shifted all of our events with topics around creating wealth. Go back to ChatGPT. When I said write the emails, Sammy gave you a, an, an awesome topic, which I'm going to use myself about the capital gains, bringing on an accountant. But you can go back to ChatGPT and say, I want to put on an event every quarter. Give me the topics, please. Now, I believe in events so much that the day that our Prime Minister locked us down, we went virtual. We went virtually once every week, every Saturday, 10.30 to 11.30 for two and a half years straight. I now go once a month in person, but for everyone in this room, do not do what I just said, because you'll do nothing. I know that. If I tell you to do something once every week and once a month, I'm going to lose every single one. So here's what I would highly recommend you do, and I'm going to make it very easy for you. Okay? I'm going to do four events a year. Two of them are going to be webinars, and two of them should be in person. As I mentioned, I'm very blessed now to do talks like this virtually and in person right across North America. And I got to tell you something. We're very lucky, and I'm not paid to say this. But what Signature has set up, I'm not sure about the downtown location, I'm sure Chris can correct me, but with our Mississauga office, in our Don, uh, shops at Don Mills office, we have a room that seats anywhere from 40 to 50 people. I've been using that room for 14 years, and he doesn't charge me for it. And gives my clients free coffee. So you don't even have to worry about what I'm speaking outside of signature, they're like, where am I going to do it, <laughs> all this nonsense. We in this room don't even have to worry about it. You already have the location with the chairs and the TV. 
That's going to be two out of your four. The other two are going to be webinars. Now, for the two people who are actually going to take action, here's the schedule for you. Okay? Your first webinar, your, your first event is going to be a webinar. I'll tell you why. Because if I tell you to do it in person, you're going to freak out. So, let's start slowly. We all know, right? Crawl, walk, run. Like when the baby didn't start crawling right away, we didn't throw the baby away. We, we worked at it. But now, I've, I'm, I'm, I'm able to articulate it differently. Actually, before crawling, you know what's more important? Tummy time. Because it strengthens the neck so they can crawl. So I'm going to do tummy time with everyone now. Here's your first event. It's a webinar. The serious ones, write this down. Do not do this in 90 days or 120 days, because it won't happen. And you'll come up with a bunch of excuses and start overthinking it. You're going to do this event in 30 days. It's a webinar. I don't even have to worry about the board you're booking again. Okay? And here's your first webinar. Chris mentioned the seven factors. The number one being cost of ownership. Everyone's talking about it. Okay? Let's bring one of our friendly independent mortgage brokers. 10, 15, maybe more. Call up the one person, if it's outside of them, I'm sure that's okay as well. And just make sure that they're okay on the date, 60 days, oh, sorry, 30 days from today. It's a webinar. So you don't have to worry about the timing in terms of what day of the week. If it's a weekday, if it's in the evening, if it's a weekend, start it at 10.30. The conversation that you're gonna have, is exactly what I said about the interest rates as well as educating people on how to refinance and pull out equity. And I got some good news for you. You as the host with the expert, it's the easiest job in the world. You're not doing what I'm doing right now, which is all the heavy lifting. Because you're gonna stick to points. I urge you, I won't stop you, I urge you not to use a script. Because see, what happens is, as you read the script, it's not as authentic, it's not as engaging, but more importantly, if the broker says something outside, the mortgage broker says outside, something outside of the script, you're screwed. So you want to stick to points. And here's what I've been doing for 10 years. Sticking with the five best questions, that you can always elicit answers. Open-ended. Going back to basics for some of you. What, where, when, how, why. What, where, when, how, why. Start any sentence with those questions. The broker can't really say yes or no. How do you refinance your property? No. Weird. 30 to 35 minutes on Zoom. Next question becomes how do you get people there? You're gonna email people in your CRM. Now, this is where I lose 99% of you. Because an email, if you get an open rate of 25%, you're a rock star in 2024. So what you have to do, exercise that we all need to do as salespeople is pick up the phone. And then you call everyone in your list. And you call and say, Chris? It's Jazz, how you doing? I know it's been a minute. I got some exciting news. I've had a lot of people reach out to me asking about what's going on with the interest rates. They're going up, down, sideways. Is there equity in the home? Are values dropping? What are maybe opportunities exist out there? So I put together a webinar. It's happening Saturday at 10.30 a.m. I would love for you to attend. 
It's a webinar, you can watch it in your pajamas. Are you good, Chris? No? Okay, awesome. Can I keep you posted for the future? Yeah, awesome. You planted a seed for the next one. He says yes? Fantastic. Just so I know, Chris, is there anyone else that you might think that might be interested in this kind of information? I can make sure I pass on the information to them. I've done that webinar, same topic, five times a year. Why? Do you know how much you're going to retain of today's conversation, guys? Scientifically, Google it while I speak to you. Scientifically, do you know how much you're going to actually retain? 10%. Say you're giving the same guess. 10% of what I say today you're going to retain. So when you do these webinars, if it's the same person coming up, it doesn't matter. It's the second time it actually jumps to about 20%. It's not until the 10th time someone hears something that is in and around 75 to 80%. I proved it to you today because we've been fucking saying CRM for 10 years and none of you are using it. I'm going to call people. I know you don't want to, but nobody gives a shit. It doesn't matter. Like, your income, and this might not be what you came here to hear, your income for the rest of your life is in direct proportion to the value you bring to the marketplace. Period. Your income has been, is, and will be in direct proportion to the value you bring to the marketplace. No shot at Mickey D's and McDonald's, but that's why you start at minimum wage there. You can tell I like my fair share of McDonald's sometimes. Do you know there's restaurant, McDonald's restaurants in North America right now have zero employees? Zero. All robots. They didn't bring much value. So if you want to earn more, the secret is bring more value. Hence why we have Elon Musk's and Jeff Bezos and Mark Zuckerberg's in the world. And they're always at the top because they bring the most value. One of them is trying to take us to friggin' Mars. It's quite valuable, possibly. Second webinar, I apologize, second in person. Now this is why I made it second because we're gonna tummy time, crawl, walk, run. is sitting down with a property management service. Why? Because anybody who registers for that event and shows up, what are they? Landlords or wannabe landlords. So you've already filtered out who the people in the room are. There are multiple property managers and property management services out there that you can Google and get connected with. Would you like any of that business, Ryan, by the way? Ryan, would you, yeah, okay. We have somebody in this room right now who runs a pretty successful property management service. He would love to probably help you do this event or he can put you in touch with someone. And if he can't, doesn't matter, be resourceful, figure someone else out. You're gonna do this at the office, east end or west end. You're gonna book the boardroom. Here's the process for you guys. I'm giving you the step by step. You're gonna send the email. It's like, this is boring at times. There's nothing exciting. But again, remember the reason there's a one, top 1% one is because they do what 99% of people don't do. You're gonna send the email and you're gonna call everyone and tell them that you're putting on an in-person event. and only 50% of people are gonna show up. 674 events as of yesterday I've done in 20 years. 674 events as of yesterday. Tomorrow will be 675, I apologize. Friday will be 675. So I come with you and come to you with true data. You're gonna put in the work, you're gonna make the phone calls, 50% are going to show up. But those 
now don't see you necessarily as a real estate agent. Like the other 77,000 that are out there, you start the process of them seeing you a little different, that you're actually bringing value to their lives, you're educating them. December 2017 was three months after my partner got, uh, passed away. And three months after, I decided, okay, well, we're either gonna be out of business, pass away tragically, or I gotta start doing something. And I decided to put on an event, because we've done it before. But I didn't do what I should have done at that time, which is still call my database. I decided to spend some money and run some Facebook ads and Google. AdWords. So I booked a hotel in Kitchener, Waterloo, and we were going to be selling a student housing project. I called the developer. He said he'll be there. I called the lawyer, I called the mortgage broker, and had an amazing panel set up. I said, you know what? Let's feed people because people like coming for the free food. Let's do that as well. Well, we set up about a $40 a head person, and we ran about $15,000 of Facebook ads. I got 150 people registered. It's like, shit, it's a lot of people. How am I gonna get them there? Because I wanna make sure they come. So I rented two Greyhound buses. Told everybody to be at Mississauga office at 9.30 on a Saturday morning, so we could take the hour and a half drive. And about a week before, the registrations from 150 people went down to about 75. When we called everybody to confirm, they said, we can't make it. I said, no problem, that's okay. Called the Greyhound bus, said, we only need one. Called everyone two days before, said, hey, just wanna make sure that you're good to come. We have lunch, is there any dietary restrictions? No, you're good, awesome. 8.30 a.m., we get there at Mississauga office, make sure we're prepared, Greyhound bus is in there, it's clean, there's five of us on the team, a little snow, nothing that Trontonians, Trontonians are not used to. At 9 a.m., nobody's there, checking my email, I'm like, is this the right date? I do what I do, I stall the bus driver as much as I possibly can, the team starts calling everybody, nobody picks up. At 9.45, two cars roll up. I'm like, okay, people are starting to show up. The two people that showed up literally came for the free food because there were clients who already bought this project. <laughs> 9.50, I take a Greyhound bus to Kitchener-Waterloo I spent close to $18,000 with two clients in the bus that already bought the fucking place. <laughs> Put the show on. I drove back. First time ever I felt like crying. Not because people didn't show up. It was because it was three months after my partner passed away and it was time for me to take the lead. I was under his wing for 14 years. And everything that everyone said to me that I was under his wing, I was never gonna be able to make it, it all came true in my mind. Luckily, it was in December because I had some time to reflect. As I came into the new year in January, I took my left hand and my right hand, Laura and Tyler, into a room I said, this is what we're doing. We're going back to basics. We're never doing Facebook ads again, ever. We're gonna call everybody that already knows us, majority of them like us. We're about to find out if they trust us. And from that day forward, I've been only been reaching out to the people in my database. Fast forward. 
I've done webinars and events now, and this is not to impress you guys, it's to hopefully inspire the two people to say, fuck, I'm gonna do what he said. Where I've done a webinar before, and in an hour and a half earned a little over 750 to 800,000. I'm so obsessed with events, I did a 12 hour marathon. It's all on tape, you guys can have it. I went for 12 straight hours, non-stop. Invest, helping people invest. Made $1.1 million that weekend. It was an amazing year that weekend. I have people, I won't say her name, but it rhymes with fauna. She watches our webinars and in the last two years has done over nine transactions. Earned me in GCI a little over $225,000. She could be in this room and I won't even know her. Let me say that again to you guys, because some of you are going to get that when you go home. This lady has bought eight places with me. She's in Vancouver. She could be here right now. I haven't even seen her fucking driver's license. But print tracking stuff is done, guys. Don't worry about that. <laughs> Just making sure. Like, it's, it's all legit. It's all legit, boys. <laughs> Why? Because she keeps coming back and seeing the webinars. So I know also how it feels for people not to show up. But here's a question for you, for real. Imagine I stopped. Imagine I quit that day. Maybe not the business. Not like suicide shit. Like what if I stop doing events? I would never have been able to give you the results that I just gave you. Three weeks after my partner passed away, I was asked to speak on stage about helping people invest into real estate. So when you do your two in-person events, I know what you're worried about. Oh my God, all the eyes are going to be on me. So why I want you to do it with the guest, because they do the heavy lifting, and then people's eyes are kind of on the guest, on the person who's doing all the talking. But as I went on stage that day, three weeks after he passed away, within about 20 minutes, I found myself back here doing my talk. Because I was that nervous. But you know what I did after it was done? I figured that if I didn't faint, I didn't throw up, that I have an opportunity to get better. Because we all know, right? Say it with me. Practice makes bullshit. How could you make something, how could you make perfect? It doesn't exist. It's why everyone's so screwed up in their minds, because we're trying to get shit perfect. What practice does is makes progress. What practice does, it makes progress. So the more you do something, the better you get at it. What's actually better than perfect is done. Done is better than perfect, forever. Because you actually did something now. So I went back to the drawing board after that event and said, okay, didn't faint, didn't puke. What happened? Well, how do I not get to the back of the stage again? Because I was weird. Came up with an amazing idea. Team, do me a favor, just put a chair in the middle of the stage, because I'll sit. And so I sat for my next event. 
It was still a little weird and awkward for me because, I, as you can tell, I like to walk around and move my hands a lot. But it got me to the next stage. So as you're thinking about being fearful, what I hope you understand is that you do it anyways. This notion that you should be doing things when you're not scared, figure it out. Don't, don't do it until like you got the target lined up. It's probably not the best way to do it. Do it while you're scared. Do it not knowing exactly what to do and what to say. Because this notion of ready, aim, and this is what you guys all do, like literally like what I'm doing. You don't pull the trigger. So you just sit there and process it by analysis. And you just sit there and let me not pull the trigger and not take action. Because I need to make sure that the wine is the best wine for my wine and cheese event. Do you know what cheese we get for our events? $45 tray from Metro down the street at Shops at Don Mills. I'll give you the best wine to get. It's called Fusion. It's about nine bucks. Nobody knows what's a good wine and a bad wine unless you're like a real wine connoisseur. Nine bucks. Fusion, red wine, white wine. $45 tray from Metro. If you come to our events now, we have upgraded over time. But when we got started for 10 years that we've been, out of the 20 years, 10 years that we've been doing events, the same cheese, nobody gives a shit. In fact, if you make it too fancy, I can tell you what the market thinks. The market thinks, bless you, the market thinks that you're actually trying to swindle them. So you're better off just offering some wine, not that expensive, and some cheese. That's your event. Now what you do afterwards is just as important as the before, the during, which is you gotta now make another phone call. And say, Chris, you came to the event. Awesome, listen, I just want to get your feedback. What did you think, man? How could I get better? What other topics are you thinking that might be valuable to yourself or to other people? Elicit, engage, get conversations happening. If you're scared of people, guys, get out of the business. So if you're scared to make these calls, and oh my God, he's, all he's doing is talking about the calls, you probably should consider another job, another business. Because I can guarantee you when you start making those phone calls after the event and saying, Chris, what did you think? How do I get better? He's gonna give you some information. Awesome. Hey Chris, now that I have you on the phone, really quickly, here's the line, open-ended. Where's your headspace at with everything that you're listening to and watching about the market? And then you shut up, just let them speak. Whatever he says, you're going to engage back and forth with him. Would you be interested in looking at some opportunities that are out there, possibly? And he's going to say, no, I'm not ready. Great, can we stay in touch? Yes. Awesome. You are interested? What are you considering? Are you looking for something passive? Or are you looking for something a little bit more active where you help, where you actually want to rent out a property, an income property right now? The words passive and active, guys, don't overthink this stuff. It's a friggin' pre con or a resale. Your third event. And I'm going to start winding down, guys, so get your questions ready. Third event. Your third event should be with a developer and educate people about pre-construction. And the reason is not to sell somebody on the spot. The reason is, is because that is still majority of our inventory. We're in a little bit of a lull. You guys have seen the graphs. It all real estate just goes up and down upwards. And right now there's a little lull in the new build segment. 
But for everybody who used to reach out to our beautiful Jeff Slightum and need allocation for units, but he probably didn't have as much because there were so many people interested, well, there's a lot of allocation right now, guys. So the people who wanted to actually even remotely touch, see, smell what the pre-con world is, right now is the opportunity. I get it, when everything was hot and booming, we all wanted one bedroom units, right Jeff? Now you can get any unit you want. So if you ever wanna get into the good books of the developers, start selling their stuff that they need help with, right now. A way to do that is bring on a representative from the developer and educate your network about how to make money in the world of new build construction. And your fourth and final event, which is again in person now, is with service providers. Let me explain really quickly. Anybody that's in your network now, and if you don't have this person, I'm gonna give you an easy way to add names into your database today. Service providers in our world are home inspectors, lawyers, mortgage brokers, we know those. But I want you to go a little bit further out. Plumbers, electrician, tradespeople, landscapers, florists, gardeners, why? Because the majority of them are 18 plus. If you ever wondered who you add to your database, anybody who's 18 plus and has a pulse should be in your database. But the nice thing with, the tra with these service providers is that they're looking for business and they're wanting to connect as well as that they know more people. And so that fourth event would not be an educational event from the perspective of you doing a talk or having a topic. It's for you to introduce the plumber to the electrician. If we can all just think back for a quick second, who was the coolest kid in high school? The person who threw the house parties, generally, right? Like the person who, like, look, I, I kind of see the smiles on people's faces because you probably thought of someone. Maybe it was you. Whoever threw the house parties was kind of the coolest kid in school. Why? Because they made everyone come together. What I want you to do with that fourth event is be the cool kid. All you're doing is just bringing people together. You're not asking for business. You're just introducing people to other people so they can build out their network. But here's what happens. I do about 15 to 20 transactions every year, like clockwork, from the electrician who sends me someone, the plumber who sends me someone, because they all remember where they met each other. No topic on that one. You can literally just stand in the front and say, guys, my name is Jazz, and I just wanted to bring everyone together. I'm planning to do this minimum once a year. If you know other tradespeople or service providers, have them come. These events are free. Let's just get to know each other. And what I say in those events all the time, you know if it, it's weird when we hand out business cards at funerals and stuff? In this setting, it's not weird. So everybody, let's share our contact info. Let's follow each other on social. And what starts to happen over time is as you send those emails, as they see you on social media, you keep showing up in their world. And that's how actual referrals happen. And so that's your process and your topics for your four events. I wanna jump into Q&A, guys, because I wanna give you as much value as I can. So I appreciate that.
I'm going to give you all, all his personal phone number, drive number. You can just call him. I actually have a treat for these guys. Really quickly, sorry, Chris. If you guys actually want to see an event put on, tomorrow night webinar, okay? You can all have access to it. Do me a favor, don't go into the chat group and say I'm a real estate agent, just do me that favor if you don't mind. It's not gonna be me who puts it on, you're actually gonna see one of my uh, guys on my team, Tyler, put it on, and he's gonna be speaking about how to work an investment performa, okay? So if you guys want, really quickly, take out your phones, so, and take this whole topic and do it for yourself. I, I'm speaking for Tyler. This is for my clients, but you can watch how we put on a webinar, okay? If you take out your phones really quickly, go to his Instagram profile because it's, it says, it's the bio in his link. It's a Zoom link. Tyler Walburn. Tyler, T-Y-L-E-R-W-A-L-B-O-U-R-N-E. -E. You'll see a link in his bio. Click it. And you'll also, once you register for that, guys, you automatically come into my CRM, and all the emails that I send out, take them. Okay. Copy them and paste them and send them out. Just don't leave my name on them. <laughs> it's for you, not for me. Um, take the emails and, re and send them to your people, okay? But that event, and look, here's the other thing with Tyler, by the way. He's actually in the process of right now starting his journey on creating content for our clients. Press follow, I know his kids love that stuff. And take his topic ideas. If something resonates that he put out there, take it and do it. Shoot it yourself. Tyler, T-Y-L-E-R, I can tell, don't worry. I've been, do I've been doing this for a while. Tyler, T-Y-L-E-R-W-A-L, and then it's born, like born identity, B-O-U-R-N-E. Sorry, Tyler, uh, uh, Chris. So just before we get to any questions, I just wanted to say this. First of all, thank you very much for sharing. That's a ton of detail, it's a ton of information, a ton of history that you've kind of tried to encapsulate within like 45 minutes. <laughs> so it's a lot. But what I also want to say to everybody is, you know, seeing Jazz and listening to Jazz today, he's been, you know, just event number 675 coming up. We have to rewind the tape to event number one. And if you haven't held events yet, Event number one could be two people, or three people, or five people. We just have to start. That's the one point. So important that you mention that, and I, and yeah. I apologize again, Chris. Because remember when like, you started in the business, and you were like, oh, I can't wait to get just one person in front of me to have that conversation about bu buying, selling, and investing? To Chris's point, when five people show up, you're now doing that consultation, buying, selling, or investing consultation, for five people in the same hour. It will take you five to six hours to do it individually. So it's just a lot better that, to do it with the five. And the second point I want to make is establishing yourself as the go-to professional in your network. I talked about it in my opening remarks. Today's world, we are no longer putting somebody in our car and driving them around and showing them Today's world is about information and it's deciphering of information that's available. You have to set yourself up and position yourself like Jazz has with his sphere of influence, with your sphere of influence. In that, see in that light. Because they're, they have that cool new thing called Google that Jazz just shared with us for the very first time today. <laughs> This is where the opportunity lies. This is why this topic is so important. It may feel big to tackle, but it is so important for that fundamental reason is establishing yourself as a go to. And there's no better way to do it than to do it with the group. It's the essence of the success of these events. And it creates FOMO, right? Like people who are at the event, they start to look at the others around the table and they're like, oh my God, there's other people here and 
there is people who are interested in investing or buying or whatever it is. And then when you make that phone call afterwards and you say, well, thank you so much for attending. What's your feedback? Oh, that's funny that you said that. So did someone else. Or, well, I can completely understand what you're thinking about the interest rates or the fact that there's not the opportunity. But, you know, I was just speaking to someone else and they're deciding to move forward. You create FOMO, like fear of missing out is real. And so that happens when you have more than just one person as well. And then the fundamentals that Jazz shared with us is pick a topic, invite the people, and follow up with a phone call. If, zero, if you do those three things and zero people show up, you've already won. You've already won. Pick the topic, send the invite. Any questions? I know we're standing between lunch. You guys oh. lunch but. <laughs> I do have a question. Jazz, first of all, thank you uh, for your time and insight. Uh, we appreciate it. So, so my, my name is Michael Botek. Michael. Michael. Yeah. So uh, my question is, we send, we curate the email. Uh, we have the idea of the event. We have the speaker, all of that. Now, let's say we have our, our CRM, and it's full of say some uh, 5,000 some odd people and we want to send it out to them. Who do we decide that we're going to call after we send the invite? Because we don't want to call, you know, all, let's say 1,500 people who open the, uh, the email. So how do you decide who you're going to call and, and, and invite? Webinar. webinar? Well, so webinar, you can have all 1,500 people show up because it's a webinar. So you don't have a capacity in terms of numbers. The process as you send the email, you're gonna have them register. So the people that register, you're not gonna call them yet. You are, in my opinion, should give them a call a couple of days before just to confirm. Or you can still automate that through Zoom where it automatically sends you the emails, okay? Then, if it's a webinar, I'm gonna call as many people that I can get to. Because the more, the merrier. Because remember, especially a webinar, you're only gonna have 50% people show up. So. We want to start as wide as possible. Then you'll have the people that show up. Then we contact the people afterwards that show up. Great question. Anybody else questions? They're hungry. Right. There you go. Jack, sorry. Oh. Go to Jack first. And then Justin. I love you too, girl. I love your rum cake, by the way. Your rum cake. So. Oh. <laughs> How do you do a webinar? Like, I don't know where you go to set up the, the logistics of setting up a webinar. So the question is, is how do you do a, a webinar? So, and that's just set up through Zoom, and you can literally just give them a call and say, I would like to do a webinar. I'm expecting 1,500 people, okay? Now, to do it for 1,500 through Zoom, it's probably a cost of about $1,500 for the year to get the license. That might be too much of an investment. So where I would just start, very, very, like, like there's no cost to it, would be Facebook. Just go live on Facebook. And then what you're going to do is have everyone come and attend and put the link to your Facebook page and just do the webinar there. Setting up a Zoom account is free for a small one. Yeah. It's when, yeah, his 1500 is when there'll be a little bit more of a cost. <laughs> Did I answer your question, Jackie? Awesome. There was one over here as well. Thank you. Amazing. Um, so would you say that majority of your work is actually done at your desk until you go out and meet people face to face? Yes, yes. Yeah, or your team. Like a lot of it seems like nine to 12, they're like, sitting at your desk, you're on the phone, you're on, you know, just sort of putting in those sort of silos, right, yeah. to be effective when you're out in the field meeting people. So the so, question was, is the majority of your work done at your desk between 9 and 12? Yes. The answer is yes. Yeah. So I, um, I made that shift about six years ago, seven years ago, where we, like, if you want to come meet us, it's at the office. Now, obviously, Zoom. We actually tell people, like, don't even come to the office. Because it's like, why? You're going to drive through Toronto traffic? Let's just do it on Zoom. 
it's an easier close. And I didn't mention this because that's not really what we were talking about. If you guys want to, a hundred percent. Did that answer your question, by the way? So nine to twelve, you, nine to twelve, you stay in the office, blinders on. Okay, shut off all your distractions. Your emails dinging is a distraction, right? I always give my wife the, if you call me twice, I'm answering. Like if my, my phone rang now and she called me twice, I'm stopping this talk because I know it's something urgent. Other than that, think back to the last 100, like 50 years of your life. When has something really urgent happened? We like this nonsense of distractions. Nine to 12, no distractions. Head down, generate business, generate business, generate business. So to make that point, your team has made how many calls in the first quarter? So the first quarter of this year, we have done a little over 2,500 phone calls. 2,500 phone calls. That has, that. that has booked us 437 appointments. 437 appointments, so that's about a 20% return on the number of calls to appointments. Okay, 250 of those appointments have been taken because the others are still a couple of weeks out. Or, so 250 appointments taken since January 8th. Okay, and from 250 appointments? 27 transactions. 2,500 calls, 27 transactions. And here's the real... 50 agents, right? 50... No, how many agents have made those? Oh, no, no, that's... That's two That's two people. Two people, but we don't do a nine to 12 for phone calls. I'm like, yeah, that doesn't, that doesn't, that's not a lot of calls. No, 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 that's two people. That's two people. Yeah, that is. Because I, I was one. It's How many people made those calls? It was two people making those calls. Nine to five. That's not nine to 12, because those two people, that's all they do is make phone calls. And they're booking appointments. What I always like to elaborate on, the 27 transactions, great. What I want everyone to get comfortable with is A, being uncomfortable. Get comfortable with being uncomfortable. A. B. It's the fact that out of the 250 phone calls that we did, 223 people, if I did my math right there, said they're not ready. Or, I don't want to do this. It's the fact that we just keep calling. We keep taking the appointment. We keep showing up. It's understanding that those 223 people, it's not a no. It's a not yet. Because the 27 transactions, guys, if I show you my call logs with those 27 people, I'll take you back a couple of years, you'll notice that they said not yet but then they popped in the first quarter of 2024. Does that make sense to everybody what I'm saying? Like, I, like I'm, I'm a call person. I, you give me the phone to anybody, I don't know. I, I, I'm very comfortable in that setting. That's my shtick, that's my thing. I can't put up a picture on a wall. Like I'm not good at any of that shit. I'm good at phone calls. And I really need you to understand this, that if you can just get comfortable with hearing not yet, you will make it in this business. In fact, really quickly, the reason I got into this business was I sold four cars to real estate agents in a 30-day period, four cars, saw their credit application. I was like, holy shit, I was 22 years old. I was like, this is what you guys make? Here's the kicker. They fucking didn't speak English, half of them. <laughs> like it must have been their third language. I'm like, but 25,000, I was like, it was, no, sorry, you said um, 75,000. I was like, bro, I asked you for your monthly income, not your yearly. That's not, the application says monthly income. He's like, that's my monthly income. I was shocked, got to know him a little bit. Amazing guys, by the way. You know what it was? He just met people, followed up. You're not ready right now? No problem, can I call you in three months? Yeah, okay, called him in three months. You're not ready yet, I'll call you in another three months. And clockwork. Is that, did I answer your question? Yes, awesome. Yeah, that's great presentation. Thank you very much. 
um, the old philosophy of knocking the door, you said like 9 to 12, calling the people, that's, uh, that's totally uh, wonderful, right? Knocking the people, going for the expired, are you advocating that also? Yeah, no, look, I advocate anything that helps you meet people in person and online. I don't think that cold calling and door knocking isn't something you should do, but do that after you do the most fundamental thing. Because see, when you're knocking on doors and calling people, they don't know you, so they can't possibly like you yet, and they for sure don't trust you. Cool? Got it. Now, the people in my phone, they know me. They probably like me. The only thing I got to touch on right now is I got to get them to trust me. So let me start with that. You can cold call, you can door knock, you can Facebook ads after you've done the most fundamental stuff. Because all the money, I'm, I, I can't stress this enough. You can see the passion coming out, guys. I can't stress this enough. All the money is in your phones. And I'll prove it to you. I'll prove it. All your checkbooks are safe today with me. I got nothing to sell you. Okay? Is that a good thing? I got nothing to sell you. But here's what I'm going to do. Okay? There's a couple of people, I saw some familiar faces here, that they've come to a little fun workshop I do. I only do it for seven people at once. It's free, there's no cost for it, it's in the back office. Okay? You're going to hear me make phone calls, set up appointments, the exact same appointments that Chris spoke about, and then we're going to go into your database and you're going to set appointments. And at the start, you're going to be uh, shaking. It's okay. I'm patient, and I'm going to hold your hand, and we're going to do this together. Okay? If you're interested, there's no cost for it, but I want to show you how it actually works. Because nobody yet, and I've done that event now for probably about 50 people in the last three months. Okay? Not one person has left without getting an appointment. Here's a kicker. Go to my Instagram profile. I just put up a video yesterday. Okay? This fucking guy just got his license yesterday, two weeks ago or something. Calls someone. Never call anybody ever. Calls his database. Says, hey, you want to do this financial checkup from the neck up? It's our script that I'm going to give you and we're going to do it together. And the guy, the guy goes, yeah, man, that sounds pretty cool. I'm very interested in that. Hey, by the way, man, I got this community I'm part of. It's about 1,000 of us, but 200 of us meet every single Thursday. Why don't you come and do your financial checkup for all 200? Okay? Write this down. F-T-G-U. Whoa, guys, write this down. F-T-G-U academy.com forward slash waitlist. F-T-G-U academy.com forward slash waitlist. If you're on your phones, go in your phones, put your information in there, and you'll be on the waitlist. Somebody on my team will call you. Side note, I'm just doing what I'm told you to do with your clients. I, I, I'm, I'm like, I'm that guy. I'm always going to pull back the curtains for you. All I'm doing is putting you into the CRM. You're going to get nurtured. One day you might do something with us. But in the meantime, I'm going to give you so much value, I'm going to rock your world. FTGUacademy.com forward slash waitlist. You come to the back at shop to uh, Don Mills, and we make phone calls together, and we book appointments. Okay? And if you put in the company name like Royal Page Signature, I'll make sure that my team, give me about 36 hours, I'll send you the before, during, after checklist of our events. Because I went over things really quickly today, but my VP and my business partner in the coaching company, Laura Stewart, she's a systems queen. She'll, she has everything checklisted. I'll send you all that. Jeff, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Thank you, brother.